Now, there's a video um, someone's put up on a evaporative fridge, and uh, they've put in the top, you know, in the top comments here, they're saying that they, you know, could paint it, but they're letting the world have it, and da da da, and going on as though they invented it, and they didn't invent it. It's been in my country for 150 years, and apparently even the Egyptians have used it. Now, I hope many of you understand the concept of an evaporative cooler. Basically, you have a cloth that is wet and the air blows through it. Um, in the process of the water being in that cloth, it actually dissipates onto the air as humidity and removes the latent heat from the air, therefore cooling it. Um, and that's how your swamp cooler works. Now, there's another thing that back in the day they used to call a safe. And it's basically one of these things here. Um, and it's just like, it's got a door and a latch, and you've got mesh in the front, mesh on either side, solid bottom, solid back, and this should have a lid, but I don't know where the lid got to. Um, and a lot of them you could actually have a, one of my father's got a very decorative one, and it's got a loop, and you can, um, you know, put a bit of wire through it or a bit of rope or whatever and hang it off the roof. Um, now, they've had those for years, but in a place which has the nation's largest gold mine and has been mined since the 1800s, or probably the mid-1800s or something like that, quite a long time now anyway, um, it's known as Kalgoorlie, but only two kilometres away or something like that is another town which is Coolgardie. Now, out there they got this swamp cooler idea going, much the way as they did in, in Boulder Town in Las Vegas when the, um, the big dam was being built. You know what one I'm talking about. Um, Boulder City in, um, not Las Vegas, but in, in Nevada when the Hoover Dam was being built. Um, that, you know, you can have a wet cloth and if air blows through it, it'll be cooler on the other side. Well, they done it with Hessian because that was easily available and it worked well for the purpose. Um, and it lets the air through and all that. And how basically, uh, what Hessian basically is, it's, it's the old onion bags, the old carrot bags, potato bags, grain bags, you know, that old school sort of brown rope material, the old sacks, you know, that you would have seen heaps of them in the 1970s and not even, they, they sort of haven't had them much in the 90s and that, but... Um, Prior to that, you know, they were quite common. Um, they used that, and they had a tray about an inch and a half deep, and it could sort of wick over the sides, like, like a, you know, oil lamp or kerosene lamp wick, and it'd take the water over the side of that inch and a half deep tray, and then it'd go down. And they basically have the hessian laying against the mesh. A good one to use is, if you want to make one, is just uh, fly screen. Fiberglass fly screen works well for it. Um, and they would have that hessian laying against the mesh and I think the one on the front of the door just would just sit there on its own sort of thing it was just flapping away um, and they'd have a tray at the bottom to catch any water if any water actually managed to get right through the hessian without being evaporated on the wind and there's one thing you've got to realise out in these desert areas such as where Coolgardie is um, these desert mining areas or all areas of the desert uh, not all, but the vast majority of the areas of the desert here, there is a constant wind. It is always blowing uh, in a lot of the deserts of this country. And this country, if you didn't know, is 75% or more um, of desert or semi-desert. There's a lot of, you know, semi-desert areas and some outright desert. Um, and because this wind's always blowing, they realised that, hey, this is going to act the same way that a swamp cooler acts, or evaporative cooler, as we call them here. Um, and it'll cool all the food inside. And it sort of worked. It wasn't a million dollars, but it did work. And, you know, have a look in the uh, description. And I, if you still got it up, I'll have the link to uh, someone who actually has one of these. And I'm surprised there aren't more on YouTube. But um, Coolgardie Safe, you can look it up. You can Google it or search for it on other sites. C-O-O-L-G-A-R-D-I-E space safe. S-A-F-E. Um, anyway, yeah, they basically just had to keep topping up the tray at the top and, and drizzle a bit of water on the hessian or re-wet the hessian if it got too dry, um, like if it ran out of water basically, or stopped wicking because the water level was so low. 
and they just keep refilling the water, and then it would just keep the Hessian wet, and the evaporative cooling effect would continue um, inside one of these safes, like I just showed you. And that's been going on for many years, you know, and um, to say you could paint it, well, you know, apparently the Egyptians were doing a similar thing with food as well. So I, I think it may be public domain if the Egyptians have been using it. Um, and I don't think there's no way in hell it could paint it if, if it's a common thing that was used in this country back in the day. Um, you know, and it's no big deal, you know. Anybody who knows anything about history knows what they are and can show you exactly, you know, tell you exactly where you've got to go to find one or who's got one because, um, yeah, they were common back in those days before kerosene refrigerators become common. And, um, yeah, they're, in a way they're like a zeer pot and I think a zeer pot would actually be better because your food is less likely to go mouldy, um, you know, but that's what we had. And uh, somebody there, nobody really knows who, started making them in Coolgardie and the next thing everybody had them and then they just went countrywide. Um, but yeah, they do sort of work, but they've got to have that wind on them. You know, and if not, um, you can, you know, basically have a fan on them off a solar panel or something like that. But keep in mind what I was saying about having the, uh, the bottle on the dog container house full of water and it's airtight and then the water will only come out at the level of where the bottle opening is and when the dog drinks some more a few bubbles go glug 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 up into the bottle and then the water refills to the level of the bottle opening again and if you do that with like a dozen soft drink bottles like big ones like you know half gallon ones or something like that two litre ones something like that we're going to well can't anymore but we used to be able to get three litre ones here um, then, you know, it'll just refill on its own accord and you can probably run it, you know, all day and all night um, or at least all night straight, you know, um, and refill it the next morning um, and, yeah, have your evaporative cooler and, I mean, these are as cheap as dirt. Now, nowadays you've got to use, you can use polyester fabric or something that, you know, business shirts or... I'm not too sure on shade cloth. I think that's too large but it's it's um, and too plasticky but it's got to be something that you can soak water up into a little bit but also the air can blow through very easily um, you know and, and the same sort of stuff you'd uh, use to make a swamp cooler but you don't want to use swamp cooler pads because they you know it'd be too hard for the wind to blow through it sort of thing um, but yeah that's a yeah uh, little thing that I saw and I thought to sit there saying pretending like you invented it, no. You know, I didn't invent the idea of residing in something made out of cardboard. Homeless people work that out as well, but I'm not claiming that, you know, by having a cardboard house I'm the first one to ever think of building something out of cardboard, um, that somebody could, you know, reside in you know, Christchurch, New Zealand, um, the church there. Uh, I only found out about that when I'd completely finished waterproofing the outside, built the thing and, and waterproofed all the outsides. Then I found out about the church in, in Christchurch, New Zealand. Um, but, you know, I'm not claiming to be the only one that thinks of residing in something made of cardboard because I know homeless people have, have done that as well. Um, and, you know, to, to sit there claiming that, you know, you could paint in something that's been around for more than 100 years just seems a bit... Weird to me, and plenty of people have told him, but you know, that's not, hasn't sort of uh, done anything, but anyway.